convolutional codes and the, um, uh, the Viterbi algorithm for decoding the convolutional code on the trellis. So today we're going to start talking about uh, more sophisticated error correcting codes. And what we're going to specifically talk about today, we need to, we need to talk a little bit about um, their decoding algorithm. And um, in order to do so, we need to introduce factor graphs. symbols as the length of the code word increases. Um, for any non-trivial code, actually it's, it's not, a, it's, not uh, it's not too complex, for example, with the Hamming code, but as we saw, as the length increases of the Hamming code, the code becomes less and less powerful because it's only correcting one error. Um, for any non-trivial code, um, the, uh, the complexity, the only known optimal, the only known algorithms that perform syndrome decoding have complexity that's at least exponential in the length of the in the length of the code. So that's obviously not acceptable. Um, so there was that's sort of where it stood for um, decades until um, about 15 years ago. Someone thought, well, okay, what if we try using a suboptimal algorithm that's still pretty good, and let's let's see how it happens. Um, so the algorithm they came up with which is actually optimal in certain settings that we'll talk about, is the, is, is the sum product algorithm over factor graphs. So this allowed the use of very complicated linear block codes, but with this simple decoding algorithm that still works fairly well. So, um, the idea of a factor graph is that it's a way to represent a, it's, a, it's a way to represent uh, one of two things. We'll see it in both contexts. Firstly, um, probabilistic models. And secondly, um, constraints. where in either case they have to be represented as a product of factors. What do I mean by a product of factors? Well, for example, in a probabilistic setting, we already know things like this, um, f of a and b can be represented as f of a given b times f of b. So that's a product. That's a product of two factors, one in a and b and one in b. So this is, I mean, that's uh, universal. This rule is universal. So therefore, any um, joint probability model in any number of variables can be broken down into a product of factors. Some are more interesting than others. What we'll find interesting is cases where um, not all, there, there are at least some, excuse me, uh, not all of the variables appear in, 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 in some of the factors. So, um, no, in other words, no factor has all of the variables. 
for example. Uh, let's be a little more precise. A factor graph. Bipartite graph uh, A bipartite graph is one that can be broken up into two kinds of vertices, which we'll call nodes uh, It's a bipartite graph with two kinds of nodes Actually, it's an undirected edge, so it, it doesn't matter if it's from a variable to a factor or vice versa, we're just connecting the two. Um, if the variable appears in the factor, so um, one simple example. Say we have a function of five variables, which can be represented with the following factors. Some of these could be conditional relationships, we could have conditional um, probability in there, but generally we're going to ignore whether things are actual probabilities or conditional probabilities or what, and we're just going to represent them as functions of variables. Um, using the rule I had before, that we draw a factor graph for this model as follows. We have one node for each variable. We have variables A, B, C, D, and E. We usually use round nodes to depict variables. And we have three factors, F1, F2, and F3. We usually use square nodes to depict factors. connecting a variable and a factor if that variable appears in that factor. So for F1, we have A and B. For F2, we have B, C, and D. And for F3, we have D and E. It's a bipartite graph, 